A little background, Palantir was founded in 2003, initially funded by InQtel. InQtel is actually the venture capital firm of the Central Intelligence Agency. So in other words, the venture capital wing of the CIA created Palantir. They were involved in the Afghan theater. They've been working with the US on drone targeting, immigration enforcement. So they have a bit of a long history in government and defense work. More recently, they've been focusing on helping corporations be more productive and efficient. So they do AI productivity software. They even worked with UK's National Health Service during COVID. So most recently, they won a really big contract called the Titan Contract. And people were a little surprised when this happened because the Titan Contract is essentially a contract to build a new vehicle. So you've got a software company that's building a new vehicle but it's gonna be focused on software. So it's like a software centric military vehicle. So I wanna get in more to like their business and how they've been doing, uh, their customers, things like that. Yeah, so give, a, give an idea. Um, yeah, thank you for that rundown on Palantir. Very interesting. And the, one of the co-founders of Palantir is on their board. I think they have multiple really highly educated people. They've got a lot of lawyers from Harvard, uh, Stanford, um, William Carp is their CEO, who I find is an extremely interesting in individual. He actually spoke, I think, this last I week. I want to say two, Alex Carp. Right? Is and his name Alex Carp? Alex Carp. I'm sorry, Alex Carp. I'm sorry, uh, Alex Carp. But he spoke this last week or two, um, and and alluded to sort of. I think a lot of it was regard in regards to defense contracting, but um, essentially, yeah, give a, give a rundown kind of in the past, uh, five years, James financials, how the company has been doing, what's your take on just Palantir in general. Last episode, uh, please check that one out. We, um, James talked a lot about price to sales ratio. And so, um, give it a rundown on Palantir. So Palantir is profitable, so we can use P, but let's just go back a little bit before we, we look at the valuation. Their business flow is a little tricky because they've relied a lot on government contracts and businesses that rely on government contracts kind of have like a lumpy nature to their earnings and their revenue. It's not smoothed out like you would expect from a pure SaaS company that just has a set number of subscribers, they pay regularly. So they have a bit of a lumpy order flow, but they have 200, so they also don't have a ton of customers, 221 total customers, which they said is 55% growth year over year and their net dollar retention is 108%. So of the customers they have, they're making eight additional percent per year from those customers. So that that's good. Yeah. No, yeah? Yeah, so excellent. So and where does Palantir fit? Just for basics, we've talked about AI um, investing in regards to you have chip designers, you have the chip makers, you have uh, the picks and shovels that... Um, help build out these cloud networks. Then you have software and you also have the people that actually sell the supercomputers. And so where does Palantir fit into all of that? Yeah, absolutely. So Palantir has a bunch of software offerings. They're, they're a software company, it's AI software. They have a bunch of different software tools. Their main ones are Gotham and Foundry. Gotham is for government, Foundry is for corporations and their productivity, productivity software. Um, yeah, so they also have Jetsy 2, Mission Manager, Gaia, all these other softwares, but essentially productivity software to answer your question. Yeah, so, and we talked about, check out the le episode that we did last week on JFrog. Um, JFrog, not a profitable software company, however, with increasing revenue growth. Is the story with Palantir, Palantir the same? Uh, interestingly enough, it actually is. It, it actually has, has turned profitable, unlike JFrog. Um, however, uh, do you see the same picture with Palantir that you did uh, JFrog in regards to price to sales, revenue growth? Essentially, yes. So 55% growth over year, year over year in customers, Gross margins are pretty good. Now, there's a huge difference between their gross margins and their operating margins. So I'll just give operating margins 34%, but that's been expanding five quarters in a row. So they just hit profitability in 2023, but they have strong cash reserves, Correct. no debt, and positive cash flow. So very good earnings and revenue growth. The, the only thing that makes it lose one star on our site for our, our rating, ranking, and our full analysis of Palantir is just the PE. So the price to earnings ratio, the, the valuation for a profitable company that we use is 70 for Palantir. It's significant, pretty high. 
Well, and I think actually at one point it was near 200, like price to earnings ratio. Well, I, okay, I mean, so I just gave forward PE. Actually, I think you're right. Trailing PE is still higher. Yeah. It's like 223. So that's what I was interesting. So the part of uh, Alex Karp's wording this last week, I think it made the news was that he believes Palantir will be worth something 10 to 20 times what it is worth now as far as market cap. So which are very optimistic. That is very strong and optimistic wording, especially a week prior to earnings, which is this tomorrow. Monday, isn't it tomorrow? Think, after yeah, it's tomorrow. Close, is tomorrow. So, um, you know, uh, the P to E ratio is extremely high. The trailing P to E, the current, uh, the forward P to E much less. However, um, as a company, I will say this, despite governmental contracts, you see that sort of the customer base of Palantir has shown consistent growth over the last five years. Did you see that same picture? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they still only have 221 customers. Well, and, and so what are your, you know, Palantir also will do these sort of, forgive me if I'm wrong, correct me, like software boot camps. Is that in that regard? Yeah. What, what is that? Tell our listeners, if you can, what that is. That's their big take on how they introduce customers to their products. Alex Carp says he likes to take someone, anyone who has a million dollars. Apparently their software is at least a million dollars. So what he says is they'll take anyone who has a million dollars, put them in a boot camp, and take their data and the data can come from anywhere. That's one thing that they're well known for is they'll take data from anything. Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, uh, Microsoft, is there any source? They'll take your data and they'll put it into their software and they'll show you how much more productive you can be during that boot camp. And he says he saved a business $10 million in one day through a boot camp. So, well, clearly, clearly, uh, things like the military contractors are, I don't know if I'm saying this even correctly, but the U S government thinks that it's worthwhile. So, um, the software, the software is, is basically software utilization of this company has shown consistent growth. Uh, the percentage growth of revenue of this company has consistently grown. And this is really part of the end game in regards to AI and, and, what we've talked about previously on our podcast. Also, I will point out the branding much better than Jay Frog. Sexy branding. I mean, much better. Palantir sexy yeah. branding. Sexy branding. I mean, I almost Tesla. 